I'm John McQuay with 8541 Tactical, and this is Mail Call Mondays, the show that answers your questions about precision rifles, optics, and equipment. Welcome to another Mail Call Mondays, and this Mail Call Mondays is going to be a short one. Uh, we only have one question to answer, and one of the reasons we are compressing it down a little bit is we are trying to get out a few more videos throughout the week than just the one Mail Call Mondays video. Uh, we've listened to your guys' comments. You kind of want more content, uh, so we're going to try to get that out to you and we're going to try to keep the momentum going. So I've got to compact this down a little bit uh, so I have more time to edit some of the other stuff that we're working on. Uh, and this week our question actually comes from our Instagram feed. Uh, if you guys are not following us on Instagram, uh, you really want to do that because sometimes we post pictures and stuff that we do not actually put on our Facebook feed. And we'll leave a link to our Instagram account down below. So make sure you go check that out. Uh, you don't have to actually post anything to have an Instagram account. So if you want to go ahead and go up and sign up for an Instagram account uh, so that you can just follow what we're doing, you don't have to put up any pictures of your own. Uh, so make sure you go check that out. And our question this week comes from Brett. And Brett asks, John, do you train in duty gear or do you feel that other training you do is good and often enough to override the specifics of the duty gear? Uh, well, that's a really good question because uh, normally I would say that if you're a police officer and you are going out and you're training for your specific job, uh, you need to train in the same gear that you use when you go to work. Uh, the holsters that we use, the magazine pouches that we use are considerably different from what you would find in competition gear uh, or out at any of the regular ranges, competitions, or training, uh, civilian type training that you find. Uh, usually police officers are working with uh, double and triple retention holsters. Uh, they're working with magazine pouches that have flaps on them. And we are almost always wearing body armor, which body armor, even the best body armor that we have nowadays, which is miles and miles above what we used to have, uh, still restricts some of that movement. So when you go to punch your hands out and punch your weapon out, uh, it does impinge on your shoulders a little bit. You have less mobility. Uh, when you are wearing heavy gear like plate carriers, uh, it changes the way that you can twist and the way you can move your body, the height you can raise your shoulders to. Uh, so all that definitely has an effect on how you're shooting. Now, for me, uh, first of all, since I'm no longer an active member on our SWAT team, I don't have to train with the big, uh, heavy, full entry vest anymore, so I don't usually have bicep protectors or neck guard or any of that. Uh, my gear. I still have a uh, regular plate carrier with rifle rated armor in it and uh, extra ammunition on the front of it uh, so that if I have a situation, say an active shooter, where I need to grab the patrol rifle and I need to grab uh, rifle armor and extra magazines, I have that. I do periodically train with that gear uh, in addition to my department mandated training uh, just so I stay fresh on it and just so I'm comfortable using it uh, because just throwing it on and getting the two or three hours of training uh, that you will usually get with that stuff a year uh, does not make you comfortable in it. It makes you able to just deal with it for that limited amount of time. Uh, but if you ever end up on a real live situation, say something like a hostage situation, those can go on for a very, very long time. And having gear that you are comfortable in uh, lowers that amount of fatigue that the gear is going to cause. You're still going to be fatigued from throwing on that extra weight and uh, having that uh, um, sweat stuck against your body and all that fun stuff. Um, but being comfortable in it, having trained in the gear and tweaked it and modified it to the point that it's comfortable on your body is really important. And you won't know how to tweak and modify it until you've spent time in it uh, to see what works and what doesn't. So it is important to get out there and train with it. Uh, now the flip side of this though, is that when I go out and do a lot of the stuff that I do training for competition uh, or doing reviews for videos and all this, I'm not using my duty gear. Uh, for instance, uh, wrapping up the SIG TAC Ops video. Uh, this is a single stack, single action, uh, hammer fired handgun that is pretty much the polar opposite from the Glock that I carry on duty. Uh, I have a manually operated safety on here, whereas my Glock has no safety. Uh, the grip angle 
uh, is slightly different on this gun uh, from my Glock. The sights that I have on here are almost the same as what I have on my Glock, uh, but that initial presentation, because the grip angle can be slightly different and needs to be modified on the way up. I have a grip safety and a really narrow grip on this guy compared to my duty pistol. However, the sheer act of going to where the pistol is located at, drawing it, going through my draw stroke, bringing up my support hand and meeting the gun in the middle, driving it out and driving that front sight onto target and engaging the trigger uh, is the same no matter if it's a Glock or if it's a SIG or if it's a 1911 or if it's a double action uh, pistol. Uh, so those activities are the same. So going through those motions of drawing the pistol, punching it out, sight alignment, front sight, engaging the target, maintaining my sight picture through recoil, follow-up shots, or even transitioning from a variety of targets, uh, that is all going to translate from this handgun uh, to what I do at work. Uh, drawing from the holster is significantly different because with this handgun, I'm running a holster with no retention at all, just basically, I guess you would call it a level one holster because it's just friction fit. Uh, it's a Kydex holster and friction is the only thing that is holding the handgun in the holster. Uh, to where my duty handgun or my duty holster is a level three holster. So I have retention, I have a primary uh, retention device and I have a secondary retention device that all have to be disabled before I can draw the handgun from the holster. Uh, the advantage for me is that I've carried that same holster for quite a few years now and drawing from the holster is automatic. I just naturally know that I need my handgun. When I grab it, that's what I have to disengage. And it's kind of interesting when you go through this that my brain knows on a subconscious level that when I am working in uniform, I have to do a different thing to draw my handgun. My handgun's located in a slightly different place and I carry it off duty. Um, I have different operations that I have to do to draw the pistol. But I have never once in a situation where I decided I need my handgun now had to fumble the draw to come out with it even if it was immediately after I spent a three hour range evolution working with a handgun like this. I immediately come up with my handgun, I see my front sight, I see what I need to see, I know where the trigger's at, I don't fumble trying to look for a safety that's not there or any of that nonsense. Uh, and that just comes with familiarity with those systems. Um, I, I'm not educated enough on the inner workings of the mind to be able to tell you uh, how the brain goes about differentiating that uh, when I'm in uniform and working on the street with certain equipment, I have to do certain things uh, to make that equipment work versus when I'm not on duty and I'm out at the range and I'm working with different equipment and I need to make those things work. Uh, for instance, this handgun here is uh, my Glock 17. And again, we talked about this last time, it's got uh, slide machining from Fire for Effect Weapon Systems, uh, but overall it works just like a stock Glock. I've got a Vogel Competition trigger in there, so it's a little lighter and a little smoother uh, than the trigger that is on my duty handgun. But uh, when I draw it and come up with this handgun, it works just like my duty handgun. Um, it does not have any safety, obviously, since it's a Glock, it's a striker-fired handgun. The trigger feels different uh, than a single-action 1911 trigger because I have the safety bar in the middle. Uh, so when I depress the trigger, I feel that safety bar and I have that take-up before the striker can break. Whereas on the 1911, I have no take-up. Make sure I pin the... I pin the grip safety there. I have no take up and then nothing before the break. I shouldn't say no take up. There's maybe half a millimeter of take up there uh, before the break. So they are different triggers, uh, but I can shoot one steel challenge match with this handgun and then shoot the next steel challenge match with this handgun. And I'm not coming up looking for my safety. I'm not coming down and trying to re-engage the safety. I know that this Glock doesn't have those features. And so my brain 
automatically switches over to the program that I need to run the Glock versus the program that I need uh, to run the 1911. And again, the only thing I can attribute that to is the familiarity with the guns. Uh, when I grab it, it feels like a Glock. I know what I need to do to make the Glock work. Uh, when I grab this, it feels like a 1911, and I know what I need to do to make the 1911 work. So, training with a broad variety of guns often. You can't just train with them occasionally. Uh, I shoot each one of these guns. I mean, you can look at the wear on these handguns. Um, I shoot both of them a considerable amount. Uh, thankfully, because this handgun is very, very similar uh, to my Glock 21 SF that I shoot for duty, uh, when I grab the Glock, either Glock, and come up with it, it works just like I would expect it to. Uh, so obviously everything I do with this translates over uh, to my duty handgun, uh, whereas with this one, it's markedly different. So it's just a matter of training with what you need to do. Now, if I was going for a world championship title in some form of competition, uh, then I would stop all the other nonsense and I would take the, the one handgun that I was going to use for that competition and that would be the gun that I train exclusively with uh, for the duration of the time leading up uh, to whatever it is I'm going to do. Um, I don't have any desire to be world speed shooting champion or anything of that nature right now, so I have no need uh, to go to the range and shoot one single gun every day for hours uh, and forego everything else. I enjoy shooting a wide variety of firearms, uh, and I am highly proficient with a wide variety of firearms. So if you want to absolutely master a gun in a certain situation, then you need to shoot that gun in that situation with that equipment every day foregoing others. Uh, so if you wanted to be the absolute fastest gunslinger you possibly could uh, while you're in uniform, then you need to go to the range every day uh, with that body armor, uh, with that duty belt, with your duty rig and your duty handgun and your magazines in their duty pouches and you can't cheat yourself. You have to go into it with all the retention devices enabled. Uh, you can't flip the bail down on your Safari Land holster and go, well, I'm going to draw with a bail down because it slows me down when on the street you would have that bail up. Uh, so if you want to be absolutely the most proficient you can possibly be with those guns, you have to shoot them in the same way that you would shoot them every time. Uh, if you want to be proficient in a wide variety of firearms, then you need to shoot the wide variety of firearms very often and develop a high degree of proficiency in those. Because I will tell you uh, that when I was training exclusively with Glocks and then I switched back and picked up the 1911 again, uh, there was a very steep learning curve to get back to proficiency with the 1911. Uh, being able to uh, work that safety every time. Every time coming out of the holster, every time when I got done engaging targets and went back to the holster, uh, knowing that that magazine release is in a slightly different position, knowing that that slide release is in a slightly different position. Uh, but just the other night, now that I have all that down, I was doing magazine change drills with the Glock at full speed. Then I set the Glock down, grabbed the 1911, switched over the equipment, and was doing magazine change drills with the 1911 at full speed. And it was no issue manipulating the controls on it, finding that slide release, which is a totally different shape and a different location than the Glock magazine release but there was no problem at all because of that training. You just switch gears and you go. Uh, so that's a bit of a rambling answer, but uh, I will train in duty gear when I need to train in duty gear for my job. I will train with alternate gear and off-duty gear uh, fairly often when I'm shooting on my own, on my own dime with my own ammunition uh, because that's what I enjoy doing. And there is a bunch of crossover between the skills uh, for shooting competition and shooting in off-duty gear versus the skills for shooting in an on-duty capacity. So uh, that's about it on the gear stuff. And I'm going to talk to you just a few minutes about this guy right here. 
this is our AR pistol build, and we are working on getting the video out on it and getting the write-up out on it, but I just wanted to show you guys this is what you have to look forward to. Uh, this is an RSS defense matched receiver set, which is manufactured by Mega Arms. Uh, we're utilizing SLR Rifle Works uh, Helix Handguard, an SLR Rifle Works Mini Comp, and a Sentry 7 Titanium uh, Gas Block. We've got a Strike Industries curved foregrip here, Strike Industries uh, Strike Switch Selector, which is something I'm really excited in checking out and seeing how well this works when we get out to the range and we start shooting this thing fast. Um, on the opposite side, We've got a strike enhanced bolt catch, which uh, I was doing magazine change drills with this thing the other day, and that is a really nice lever. Uh, we've got the Strike Industries uh, magazine catch and Strike Industries enhanced dust cover on here. Uh, coming to the back, some of the really cool features on this gun are the Law Tactical folding stock adapter. So with just a button push, I can fold that stock over and make this a very, very compact package. Uh, this is their new Gen 3M folding stock adapter. Uh, so it has some differences from the original folding stock adapter uh, that we did a video on quite some time back. And I'm gonna cover the folding stock adapter on its own in a later video because it really is a very cool piece of hardware. It is not a cheap piece of hardware, but honestly, when you have something that is retaining a high-speed flying piece of metal really close to your face, uh, you don't want a really cheap piece of hardware. You want something that is overbuilt and will work 100% of the time. And then the biggest, most controversial piece of hardware that we have on here is the Shockwave Blade Pistol Stabilizer. Uh, again, this is a pistol. This is not a buttstock. Uh, this is a stabilizer that is supposed to help you to shoot this big, heavy, bulky pistol to a very high degree. And uh, we have not gotten this guy out to the range yet. We just finished the build a couple of days ago. Uh, so once we get some shooting time with it, I'm going to come back and let you know how well this stabilizer actually works. If it's worth the money because it's not a cheap piece. Um, and if it's something that you might want to put on a pistol build for uh, your own purposes. We are also running a Faxon Firearms 10.5 inch barrel in here and a Faxon Firearms bolt carrier group. And to round it all out, we've got a Magpul grip and we are running a ALG advanced combat trigger in here. So it's really a nice collection of components. Uh, we didn't really cheap out on anything on this guy. And so I'm really anxious to get out to the range, burn some mags through it. And the goal of this build was to see if a AR-15 pistol is actually anything more than a range toy. Can this be used for a viable defensive weapon? Uh, so that's about it for the intro on this guy. Uh, and we will get some more details out to you guys. If you have any questions, uh, broad questions on it, you can go ahead and leave them in the comments section below. Uh, we will try to make sure that we tick off those questions when we go through the actual build video. Uh, so that's about it for this Monday. If you guys have questions or comments on anything that we've covered, please leave them in the comment section below or send them to us on Facebook or Twitter. If you like this video, please make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, get out and shoot.